plan. Happy Sunday morning. You're watching Inside Tennessee. Our guest is Congressman Bill Rowe. Congressman, as you mentioned, you are also a physician, so I'm kind of curious. The president said we think we'll get a vaccine maybe out there in November. You're a doctor. I trust your opinion on this. Do you think that's realistic? I do. And I, I met this week with uh, with uh, Secretary Azar and uh, Dr. Slawi, who's the, the contractor who's brought 14 vaccines to market. And we don't have time to go through all this. And it's it's worrisome. People think, well, it's not going to be safe because it's happened so quickly. It's not the case at all. What's happened is all of the processes have occurred in sequence. In other words, phase one trials, when they occurred, the results immediately allowed you to go to phase two and then phase three, which are really gigantic trials. There are, uh, John, there are four different platforms used to develop these vaccines and there are two companies mm -hmm. on each platform. Three companies now are in phase three trials, which have uh, upwards of 30,000 and Pfizer will go to over 40,000 patients. Remember when you get, uh, when you get the either placebo or you get the real thing, uh, the actual antigen, then in six weeks or so, you're going to know whether you build antibodies or not. So you're going to know fairly quickly. And 97% of all vaccine adverse reactions occur in the first 42 days. So those studies are ongoing. By late October, we should have pretty good results, and we'll have a, a decision then. And there will be millions of doses available because what we've done this time, John, is we've produced the vaccine at the same time we're studying the vaccine. We've never done that before. So we'll have uh, tens of millions to start with and then hundreds of millions next year. Won't be this year with that large a number. And look, we know where 40% of the deaths are in nursing homes, long-term care facilities. And let me just say this very quickly. I know we're short on time, but if you are, 80% uh, of the deaths were over 70 years of age. If you are between 40 and 60 and you get coronavirus and you actually have to go to the hospital, your mortality rate is 0.1%. If you are less than 40 years of age and you get COVID, and remember only about 10% of patients who actually get it end up in the hospital, but if you do, your mortality rate is 0.01%, which is one in 10,000. And I, that, those numbers I think are helpful for our policy people to make wise decisions. And the other thing I think we should be is as truthful with the American people as we can be so that they can trust us, whether it's a vaccine or the numbers uh, that we're telling people. Because this now is political season, and I have to just scratch my head sometimes when I hear the things I hear. Thank you. Um, thank you for that information. I think everybody has, uh, will, will pay attention to your, uh, your assessment. Um, you've told us some of the things you've accomplished while you've been there. Was there anything that you really wanted to get done that you were not able to get done in your uh, 12 years? I think so, yeah. That, you always, you never get done. Uh, this, this, uh, this republic will never be done. But healthcare reform is one that I, I felt uh, really uh, let down on. I really wanted to do that. It's one of the reasons I ran, Susan, for uh, Congress was to to make myself a player in the healthcare debate, and hopefully I'll be able to continue that when I leave Congress. Uh, I knew a lot about practice in medicine. Uh, during the last 12 years, I learned about uh, much about the policy of medicine, and those are two very separate things, from the examining room to the to uh, the policy part. But uh, as I said, I think we have the resources, and there's not any reason that we can't provide affordable health care for all of our citizens. One of the things, uh, Susan, that's come out of this. Uh, pandemic I want to mention that has been good if anything at all is the advancement of telehealth um, that has that has grown exponentially and we're using it right here this morning but I can use it as a physician if I could see my patient talk to them uh, you have all ways to we have uh, devices now that people have in their home that you can get their blood pressure their pulse uh, their temperature EKG all of that I can see so I think that's been one of the things that's really been good, and it's how we're going to get specialty care to, to underserved areas, whether they're in a city or whether they're in a rural area. Yeah, totally Congressman, agree. you've had the, uh, the, the the luxury or misfortune of serving both as the minority party uh, and in the majority party. What are the biggest differences you've seen in your time uh, between each of those roles? Well, it's a whole lot more fun in the majority. <laughs> you can, you can, uh, it always on. is. As a Tennessee Democrat, <laughs> I can tell you. You get to pick what's served <laughs> for dinner. Is. Well, the, the, the reason is this, um, is that you set the agenda and the policy. What's going to be debated and discussed? The, the majority sets that. 
So when I had the chair of the Veterans Affairs Committee, look, I, I knew exactly. I traveled from Long Island to Los Angeles and all points in between. And um, so I was able to say, okay, if, if you are given this opportunity, Phil, what, what is your vision for how you see the VA should be now and in the future? And I didn't go through all of the Mission Act. Part of the Mission Act, Don, was to, to have a, uh, an asset review to basically reform how the VA looks because uh, veterans are moving from the north and east to the south and west. So the, the health care needs to be where the veterans are. So there, there are a lot of things like that, that that can be done and are being done that I got done. Uh, in the majority where you, you couldn't in the minority. You just don't set the agenda. Congressman Phil Rowe, we really appreciate you taking the time to speak with us. It's been a pleasure. You're always welcome here at Channel 10, and we wish you the best of luck. You're watching Thanks very much. Uh, Inside Thanks. Tennessee, and we will be back after this break.